All right, so the, the reason why I um, started recording was in the building because as me and myself was coming into the building, you had these people standing there. There's a guy, there's a guy, I can't see who else was there. White guy, again, um, waiting, literally waiting aside of the apartment, staring at me, right? So I was like, okay, I got to record this. Yeah, again, just to show you guys the surveillance, the psychological harassment, the stalking. Even though I'm coming into the building, the fact that there he's there waiting, right? From and then staring at me in such a manner, you know, you hear the there's a fire truck, very low, using that, you know, that that uh, uh, noise where it's like it's constant, but it's you know it's like a, a constant tone, but it's long, it stretches out. In terms of you know uh, the 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 amount of time that it's continuously on, so they're doing it very very low, so that the mic won't be able to pick up their the noise attack, All right? So again, yeah, I just wanted to show. That. Also, I'm not sure if I finished talking about what was happening uh, with my son. Like I said, with the two teenage uh, girls, I was waiting there, and they're literally like waiting there, you know, uh, for them to come down. Because they know I'm coming there, so they, you know, again, the use of teenagers. And again, I talked about this earlier, very early in my talking, and I didn't even know what was happening, but I knew that I was being conditioned because they used to have all these teenage girls come up to me, wanted to ask me questions. They would be bending over on the table in front of me, like literally bending over. They would literally come into the restaurant, stand at the table next, uh, in front of me, uh, talking. Either they come and ask me a question, and, you know, at first, I was very hesitant to answer any question, and I don't think I ever did. I think I remember reading from this website, from this blog, from another TI, that's who was saying that they were also using teenagers to come and talk to him and stuff like that, and you know, ask questions, and they would sit down in the same on the same table that he's at, you know, to try to. And he was like, he started to explain these things to his uncle, who was an FBI agent. He said, document everything because, you know, what they what they're doing is trying to create a perception. Right. So again, as you say, a lot of things that they do to create your whatever personality they want to create within you, they do it covertly. And also, if it doesn't work, they they'll send these teenagers around you. If you're a, um, a male TI, uh, depending on your sexual orientation, you know they'll send teenagers of the opposite sex or the same sex, whatever you're into, to create this perception that you speak. Into. You know, again, it's a lot of uh, uh, perception-based narrative that they do. Right, and also to try to get you into that mindset that condition you using silent sound to engage in changing your personality to whatever narrative they want to create with the, whatever narrative that they've they're going to engage in targeting you negatively to try to turn you into whatever it is that they say you are. All right, again, I, I experienced this, and so I'm talking about this. Also, the funny thing, and I I forgot about this. The video, there's a video, and I'm going to do a video on it, of a man walking into a church, pointing a gun at a, at a pastor, and he's pulling on the trigger, but the gun couldn't go off because there's no bullets in the gun. All right? The gun didn't jam. There's no bullets in the gun. Apparently, they said that they found uh, uh, the body of a relative at his home. Right? They're saying that he was hearing voices, what have you. Okay? But go and look at that video because you'll see that pastor, because when he pointed the gun at the pastor, that pastor, he jetted out of there. He, like, he, he ran behind the pew. Right then, or behind the podium, then somebody came from a from behind and and uh, grabbed the guy from behind and held onto the gun. And as the pastor comes out from behind the podium, right, watch what he does. Watch what he does. Now here you are. There's a man with a gun. Somebody's struggling with the man with the gun. And instead of you rushing to subdue, watch what he does. So he gets up from behind the, the podium calmly, grab his tie with both of his hands. The tie around his neck, grab his tie, right, and then proceeded to, and I'm like, that's strange, right? You almost lost your life, and this is what you're thinking about. That's the first thing you think about when getting out of the podium. Instead of trying to rush to tackle that guy, because just in case he might have gotten got, got away, right, that you can tackle him. But go and look at that video, and you guys will see exactly what I'm talking about. Because I said to myself, I was going to do a narrative video on that, like you know, not narrative, but uh, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, reaction video. That's what it's called, a reaction video to that. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what it is I'm talking about, all right? These things are planned. This, this guy was, an, he was a program assassin. 
So they can uh, send their subliminal messaging to whoever, probably even me as a TI, or probably to TIs most likely, and what it is that they can do. Or to show other people who try trying to see what's going on, what it is that they can do, how they can program people. All right? So I'll talk to you guys. And uh, anything else before I forget? Uh, shoot. Um, uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. If anything else, if I remember anything else, I will uh, update on the next video. All right? Talk to you guys in the next video.